Yeah. Bill Ten. Cold Miles. Uh huh. While living ain't really all that it seems to be Find out the hard way as I'm collapsing on my knees Crazy fun is way too cool and it's the move Some say fun is better than you staying in school Fun and I chase all the ultimate thrills No worries pops when I always pay all my bills Pop is rich far beyond comparison I'm longer for inheritance than I know that I'm sharing in And then my 13th birthday came, I made demands And tears pops handed over cash in his hand With money in my grip and at a two mile high I spit away handheld high saying bye bye Soon homeboys and girls surrounded me like friends Wanting to ride in my new Mercedes Benz Sunset parties to morning sleep ins I fit the Bacardi, that's hard Drinking. It's funny how the money burned up so fast Friends turn magician, disappear when you lack cash But the day my world collapsed, I flashed back How could I be that blind? Really that's so whack While living ain't really all that it seems to be Find out the hard way as I'm collapsing on my knees In desperation, I call God for a lifeline Prayer answered with a job feeding ripe swine My empty stomach envy them eating before my eyes And so pity I long to see my family before I die In the dream I vividly saw my pop welcome me home Table with food and drinks it was sweeter than some honeycombs A plan made to return home with a repentant heart A journey to beginning with the early morning start And from a distance I saw pop with open arms Finally safe from hunger, safe from the harm Confession was returned with forgiveness My heart felt such sweetness and stillness Bro, complain pops is out of his mind Mind pops come back, hey yo, my lost son is found While living ain't really all that it seems to be But now the hard way is I'm collapsing on my knees to this day Hey yo, we sing of God's grace An undeserving gift even in a dark place Amazing grace, how sweet the sound To save the wretch like me, uh-huh See I once was lost, but now I'm found Was blind, but now I see, uh, come on Let's build a five pill base box. Yeah, out of non dot Toshiba. Wow. It does make a little bit me a little bit ner uh, more nervous working with two hundred dollar parts now. It's kind of crazy though. They're only fifty dollar parts when the guy ordered this box from me. All right, let's get some work done. Yep, I uh, I still tap all of these holes. I know I don't have to. I can use the self-metal tapping screws, but I'm one of very few builders that I've noticed that still use, or not still, but let me just say uses Allen head. And the reason why I like these is because I can, to me, it feels like I could torque the transistor down to the heat sink a lot tighter. Maybe I've just never found the, the perfect screwdriver that, <laughs> that makes me feel like I'm able to torque a uh, Phillips head down real well, but that's just me. We're about to start mounting these uh, whew, pieces of gold here, man. Goodness. These are hard to find. Just nervous handling them, man. They're worth so much. You just think they were only twenty-six dollars when I first got into the hobby. Now you can't even get them. Thank God I contacted HG when I did to push them towards uh, getting the transistors worked out that we use today. I'll be back. And just to show you real quick, that's how we're battling the airflow issue right there. All right, it's time to pop our hole through the... I don't even know if I've ever put this on video before. I don't think I have. As y'all know, since I've pretty much started, I've always took pride in hiding all of my wires to keep the amp as clean as possible, keep as much air flow through as possible through all the components at the top. And this is, this is how I do the main wire on the hot bus. And the reason I'm taking away so much of the, uh, the heat sink right there, so when the power wire goes up there, wrapped in Teflon wrap, that it's not even touching the heat sink and not chafing against the heat sink at all. So you can't see real well, but if you go all the way down at the bottom of that hole. 
All right, she's coming together. This is going to be uh, a whole lot like this blue one I just did. This blue uh, all Toshiba, all 2879, 5-pill base. The only difference is the guy really, 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 really wants this bias. <laughs> And I am not a fan at all. I'm an absolutely not a fan on biasing amplifiers with drivers in them. I'm not. I don't. I'm not a big deal on bigger amps with a two-pill driver. But I don't like biasing one transistor sections. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. If you, if you AB bias just this four-pill section right here, all it needs is a good radio. Sorry, I'm shaking around the camera a lot. I know. Oh, I'm going to be getting some uh, get newer camera equipment here soon. But anyway, it's in the works. It's in the works. But she's coming together good. So yeah, we're going to be doing a B bias. And I have some of these 12 ohmers uh, laying around here, which will do the job. Which will do the job. It should put us up around 0.4 volts or so. Maybe 0 0.41, 0 0 0.41, 0 0.42, somewhere around there. So basically, he'll be able to run the four pill bias that way. He can run it all, that's fine, but I suggest if you're going to go out on side bend, just run the four pill. Just run the four pill with a good radio, you'll be amazed what it'll do. Alrighty. On with the show. We gotta pop my hole through here on the bias uh, on the hot bus. I usually do that before I do all this. This I think this will be the first time we having to pop it through after I've already put it down. We'll figure it out. Alrighty, coming along real good on this. Uh, sorry, I hadn't made a lot of video clips during the whole process. I'm just uh, trying to focus on this and hurry up and get it done get it done as quickly as possible and taking videos uh it does take a lot more time than you would imagine but anyway this was coming together real good I was, i've been able to use uh the pictures i did of the one i did before this one to uh make a couple improvements in my mind uh, like for example just the way this board is mounted i've got some extra support so you're dealing with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of hardware. Let's see, one, two, three, three nuts, one, two, three, four washers total on each bolt. This is getting, makes me feel a lot better. And this turned out a whole lot better as well. You know, having to add this piece of a uh, phenolic board here to do away with this hole that was right here so the air would just come in and a whole lot, lot of it would just be going out of this hole not even not even uh, cooling the heat sink so we've got that completely blocked off so the only way this air can get out now is through there and I went ahead and pa painted the phenolic on the back I didn't do that with the last one I did it with this one just a couple other things uh, Went ahead and uh, put this up here just to kind of help guide the wire, keep it stationary. I mean, this is a base box. It's not going to be being moved around a lot. But, but anyway, it's turning out real well. All i got to do now is uh, got to put the output coax here. Um, you know, I if you know anything about my builds, you'll know one thing about old Gatekeeper. He is absolutely insane about hiding his wires. I've been hiding my wires under my heat sinks and anywhere I could possibly do to make it as less congested as possible. Because you got to think, the more wires you've got on top of this board, the less air you've got been able to make it around certain objects. But to me, I've just always liked to, uh, it's just kind of been like a signature to me, I guess you can say. And yes, it does take a lot more time to do it, but it is what it is. Um, but... The only thing I will not be able to do, which I have done in the past, is uh, hide the wires for the actual bias output here. So we're just going to run it 
running around here uh, onto the uh, resistors. In a couple of boxes in the past, I've actually took it below the board and actually brought it up. But I ain't worried about it. I ain't going to go to all that trouble with this. Uh, I could, but it ain't no big deal. So anyway, we just got it Class C right now so I can uh, get the box tuned out uh, to, to where it's going to be in Class C, of course. But I don't like to give bias to an amplifier that's being keyed up for the first time. I like to Class C it key it up, make sure everything's right, do a little bit of tuning, then bias, and then finish the tuning. Because the tuning actually can be a little different with bias. Uh, some people may not know that. You may need a little bit, a uh, couple peak of ferret here and there with a little bit of bias. But anyway, I hadn't made uh, a lot of video clips, so I just thought I'd hurry up and make one before I continue. We'll be mounting this. That's another thing. On the last one, I just put a piece of phenolic here and soldered the wires to it. I'm using a bus on this one. Uh, you know, not a big deal. You sitting there thinking if somebody took the top off and touched it, they could shock themselves. Which you know, people shouldn't be taking the top off, touching stuff while it's plugged up anyway. But but anyway, uh, so I just thought I'd do this. So these are already mounted together. Ready to go. Can't put the plastic on here because the wires are a little bit too bold. I could put it on there, but I don't want to risk it popping off while it's been shipped or used and jingling around inside the box. But this one's fine. It's uh, just cosmetic type stuff. All right, man. We'll be back again. All right, man. We, uh, we got this bad boy tuned. I tuned it on Class C first before I added the bias and circuit. And then, uh, so now we've got the bias and circuit hooked up. This is the first time I've ever done an actual B bias. Uh, to do a B bias, I can use the rectifiers I was using before, but the voltage drop across them are so high, I would have to drastically change the circuit. So I just went ahead and went with a Zener for this to help out with this for it to work properly the voltage drops a lot less it works perfect for the load but anyway so here's your bias circuit this relay this to this choke just trying to keep the rf from going back into uh back this direction of course and, and another reason why i put this down i didn't want this hanging putting a lot of pressure on this relay and possibly breaking off the lead that's another reason why I went ahead and done it that way. I may just put a little uh, a disc capacitor there too. And I need to add one here too for support. Notice this right here can be a little wobbly. But anyway, let's see here. I'm just going to show you the voltage. I just figured out I need two hands to do this. Let me just do this. See if I can. All right. Manually keying it with no RF. Dot three eight. Dot three eight. Dot three six. And then, and then this one. Eight, about 386. Alright man, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make sure the tune is still good. Make sure I don't need a retune since we're on B bias now. Go ahead and mic in these trimmers. And then uh, then we're going to drop the power supply in and uh, everything will be uh, pretty much done at that point. We'll be back. Dun, 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 dun. All done. Uh, and boy did this thing turn out. Beauty, as the French would say. <laughs> Woo, this thing turned out pretty good. Very good. This is now the second five transistor base amp. In the last video of the uh, of the uh, five pill base amp, I wanted to hurry up and show them picture the very very first 
base amp I ever did, which was a four transistor base amp. Just to show people where I've come from since then. And I'm gonna try to remember to do that. So anyway, man, here we go. We had a little hiccup with the fans. Let me explain. <laughs> when adding this, I'm just trying to improve a little bit on the design than the last design. I did have a piece of phenolic board like this that I had the hot uh, the uh, the hot in the neutral wire for for the 110 and uh, and I you know it was okay and all but I just don't like the idea of having something hot so I can just touch. You know, I like to try to cover that stuff up as much as I can. Yeah, I could have sprayed it down with some clear, you know, but I just thought I would try something different, you know, and, uh, but when doing it, I didn't think about how high this was. You know, I was going to add four green fans. Those bad boys, which is the last gate loons that I have, which is the fastest LED fan I've ever been able to locate. So I'll just be able to use them for another project. So what we did is just added two fans with the same uh, same speed as those four. So these are gonna be pushing some really, really good airflow, man. And uh, try not to bump the uh, camera around a whole lot here, but it turned out great, man. This is the first time I've done a B bias like this so uh, it could look a little better physically you know I'll the next one I do um, I'll get a little bit more cleaner with it. I think this would look better if these were white but it ain't all about physical looks even though I'm trying to do as equal physical as it works so looking as good as it works so this bad boy has three relays in it being uh, staged with bias and I've done a little something different with the sideband delay. You know, since you're dealing with two relays here, you know, I need to have separate delay caps to each relay in case you're, you know, interchangeably using each section. So uh, this turned out real well the way I did this, having to just come up with three wires and attaching the caps the way I did to the switch. I kind of like the way I did that. It's a lot cleaner than the way I've done it in the past. There's your hook up there for your radio or uh, any other 12 volt source you would like to hook up. Um, you, you're not super limited to how much amperage you really can pull, but the only thing that's going to be limiting you is the actual BNC connections here and the uh, 16 gauge wire, 14 gauge wire, excuse me. But uh, if I was you, I would try to keep it 10 amps and under, you know, really 5 amps and under. Just this is mainly just here for you to run your radio if you wish. So, and uh, you, you could run a dual final radio off that jack, no problem. But I would not run anything higher than that. You know, try to keep it 10 amps and under. And I've got a 10 amp protection diet on there, just you know, just for a little extra protection there. So uh, yeah, man, she turned out great. I did the ground system the same way I did the last one. Got some no locks on that connector. First time I've actually ever used no locks before since it's copper and aluminum. So that thing will never oxidize on you. And oh yeah, that's another thing I want to say. When, when using these projects like this, the case isn't made for this. Now they do have cases now for this, but at the time using, this is a 16 pill cabinet for a mobile application. So when we're building projects like this, there's gonna be a little minor blemishes that you have to cover up and modify. And one of them is the big hole that's down here. Let's see if I can't show you. There's a big hole down here. And I've seen other builders cover it up the best way they can, but still have a little bit of uh, focus, but still have a little bit of air gap to where still some air wanted to flow through now I wanted to just like I want to do with every box I want to have absolutely zero air leaking out of this box 
or unless it's coming through the heat sink. That's the way I want it, is it, as much as I possibly can. With this one, I was able to do it 100%. We, 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 we've got the blocking uh, finellic board, which I did paint green for you just for cosmetic looks, to block the air from there, from that port. And then we've done what I just showed you from here, which turned out perfect. There's absolutely no air gap whatsoever. There's no air seeping through there. Now the second issue, the third issue, is right here at this corner. I don't know if you watch a lot of other builds where people have built five pill uh, base amps like this or other amps uh, using a similar board, you'll notice right here at the, the back left corner, let's see if I can't get some light in here. I don't know if this is going to help much. Let's see. Right there. There's a huge air gap where the air can just kind of seep straight down through there. Man, that's bright. So about the one of the best ways to just fill that air gap is with some uh, silicone. So that's what I used. It ain't the prettiest thing in the world. You know, it's kind of hard to get it smoothed down in that little tiny area around those wires. But it's filling up your air gap, man. So it's, you know, this, this box, the only air making it out of this box, period, is out the back. So back to the fans. I've never, ever, you can watch every single one of my videos. I have never had to wall off. A fan hole before you'll see a lot of builders doing this because technically you don't need four fans with this setup all you need is two so why use four and in the past what I've done is just use four mild fans to kind of equal up to two real good fans just to utilize the holes that are already there so I've never actually had to do this before this is a very high temperature uh, plastic type material that they actually use in um, a lot of electronics to insulate bottom boards from uh, ground so things will not short out. And luckily, I had a little bit of it laying around. It's this type of material right here. You, you can literally take a, uh, a solder and iron and sit it on it and it won't even burn through it. And it turned out absolutely great. Absolutely great. And then I just utilize these nice uh, point, your points yeah, 0.74 in in NMBs, which uh, pulls some really nice air. A lot of times, I'll use I've used these fans in the past on two driving eights or eight pill setups. But these are a fan of choice that I use with my Texas Star fan kits. If a lot of you are familiar with those, and uh, I don't have to add a lot of resistors to it for the high and low, and it, they work very great. With a lot of the other high speed fans with my Texas Star fan kits, I have to add two sets of resistors. So, that worked out great. Now, the last part that I did add some silicone to. Now, the amp before this, let me just show this. The, the amp I did before this, I did not add a voltmeter. Now, let me explain why. This right here is candy paint. This right here is literally house of color candy paint. This is not cheap. It's, 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 it's so not cheap that I couldn't afford I couldn't afford to paint the inside of the case as well. That's why you see all these boxes. Most of the time, the insides aren't done. Because for my painter, which owns a collision center, shout out to Mr. Marte, for me to get the insides done, it's going to cost literally the same if I got two of these cases painted. Because he is literally going to have to let the outside dry, then do the inside. We're talking about two separate deals, like he's painting two of these boxes. So it's just not. There's been a few that that he did do that you'll see in the past. It just wasn't price-wise. It wasn't. It didn't make sense. Nobody's going to be sitting here looking inside the box all day, but you can see the outside. So anyway, with that saying, I don't exactly exactly trust trying to drill big holes in these cases. And yes, of course, I didn't think about drilling the hole before I got it painted. I seem to never think about drilling the hole before I get a box painted for a voltmeter. 
So that's why I didn't have one in the last one. And I was looking around online and found these really neat voltmeters that are flat. And all you have to do is drill a tiny hole in the back and it sits flush right here. I thought that was so neat. I have not seen these voltmeters before. So I bought a few of them and tried it out and it worked great. The only thing about it is there is a little air gap I don't want to, here's the deal, this needs to sit flush, flush as possible. I didn't want to drill a hole and add a grommet, because the grommet's going to stick out and this isn't going to fit flush. So the only way to really do it to make it work real well is to drill a hole a lot bigger than it needs to be, but then I have an air gap for the air to make it out through. So all I did was put a little silicone around that bad boy, and then she will be airtight for the remaining of her days. And hopefully, you know, you won't have to ever change this uh, voltmeter in the future. But if you do, you know how silicone is really easy to work with. You can pull it up and do what you need to with it. So, all right. So, there's the box physically. The only other thing I am going to mention, as you probably can see, gatekeeper, why is this voltage on 13.9 volts? Well, very simple. A builder's not a true builder unless they can just flat out admit to you they don't know how to do something. And I do not know how to make these mean wells go any higher in voltage. I've asked uh, two other fellow builders, and they did not know as well, because they had not really worked a lot with these style mean wells. This, what this is, is an SP480-12. And I have about 15 or more of these left. And hey, if there's anyone out there that does know how to modify these to go a little higher in voltage, it'd be really nice if this thing was sitting about 14, uh, 15 volts or 14.5. But we got $250 transistors in here, a thousand plus dollars worth of pills in this thing. So I don't feel bad at all about it sitting on 13.9. And I'm going to tell you something else too. These are the, back to what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by by a low uh, micro SD card space. Uh, I believe what I was saying. <laughs> I watched the video. I'm like, what was I about to say? These are the best what? Or the highest what? I think I was going to say these are the highest end supplies uh, that you can get. A medical grade type supplies. And uh, I just, I don't think a lot of people have used these in these uh, type of builds other than uh, I've seen BBI use them quite a few times and uh, a lot, most of the times we use the uh, the lower end 30 amp or 40 amp uh, modules which are a lot cheaper and work just as well as long as you hook them up and install them correctly but uh, but anyway hopefully I'll figure out how to, how to do a simple modification to the flyback circuit or something inside these for the future uh, build. Look, I got some future builds that I write really be nice to have them sitting around 14.5 or whatever uh, non Toshiba builds but anyway let's go ahead and get this thing rolling and show you the uh, the performance of it man I mean it turned out absolutely great I'm very happy with the way everything turned out I think I pretty much showed everything on camera just to give a quick overview of everything All right. One transistor section. Just had to replace the batteries in this bad boy. Got some rechargeable lithium ions now. 250 watt slug. Looking at the top scale. Oh, it's right there about 125. Let's see. 2500. Yep, about 125. Oh, and uh, you'll notice oh, that voltage doesn't sag. Input reflect. Oh, yeah. Hardly no movement whatsoever. Four pill section. Let me go ahead and change out the slug. I'm going to clean my meters too. I don't know if you can tell. 
400, uh, let's see, four transistor section bypassing the uh, one. Be biased. Go off the scale. Here's your input. Do -dia. Do -dia. That is a five uh, watt slug. So you're looking at, uh, let's see, the 10 is one watt. So you're looking at less than a quarter of a watt of input reflect. All right. Let's go ahead and turn both sections on. Add that Russian variable in. Uh, the dead key can be a little high. You may want, if you're not able to adjust the dead key on your radio, you may want to turn that back. I don't suggest running it all the way down. Although these Russian variables are, are, are stiff as a tank. I'm going to tell you, they're strong. All right, 1,000 watt slug PEP. Do so right there about 900 watts, a little bit less than 900. Here's your RMS. Do and I mean, that, that, is, that is remarkable. Remarkable with the voltage of this on. I mean, you're looking at about 450 you getting close to 500 watts RMS. Let's see. Does the bolt drop? Go. Oh, that is unbelievable. <laughs> the voltage is literally not dropping, not even 0.1 of a volt. One millivolt. Go. Oh, tell you, these supplies are super high end nine times out of ten any supply you're going to see that voltage drop now the main reason why the voltage is not dropping is because we're not pulling these supplies anywhere near to point to where they would fall out of regulation and and, and, and and also when you pay more money for better supplies you're getting a better more tighter percentage of regulation one way or the other so, all right, man, well, there you go. I could hook up a bigger radio and everything, but this one is actually performing just a bit better than the last one. The uh, bias circuit does probably have a little bit to do with it, a little bit less drive to get it going. Do God, that is right there, almost 500 watts RMS. Do 900 whiskeys. 900 whiskeys. There's where you can hook your radio up right there, brother. Here's your SSB delay switch. And that right there is going to do a isolated SSB delay for each relay. Go. Absolutely amazing. And uh, I'd like to point out, this is a to key your uh, four transistor section only. So if you do want to have a foot pedal or hook this up to a more higher end type radio, all you're doing is connecting the tip of the RCA plug to ground. These two together. The shield to the center. These are high-end RCA plugs too. I really like them. I'm going to start using them. They're actually designed to use with up to 10 amps of, of uh, 30 volts of power, believe it or not. I don't think I would use them for that, but anyway. So, for example, you could have yourself a foot pedal. You know, you're talking off the one transistor section since the uh, four is not keyed. And, uh, When you feel like you need a little bit more step on it. <laughs> so there you go, man. These, uh, I, since I tightened everything up and got this box completely airtight, the air that flows out the back are absolutely beautiful. Beautiful airflow. I'm very happy with it. All right, let me calm down, y'all. Like I said, this is my second five transistor base. I've, I've never even built a four transistor base. I've only built small base boxes. I don't know why it's just kind of worked out that way. I haven't had many people order them till right there at the end. And now I've got some big ones coming up. Two by eight, eight pill base boxes. Uh, 
I think that's the biggest base box I got. The rest are uh, gonna be mobiles. So anyway, I'll be right back, put the tin on this thing, just let you take a look at it with a tin on. And uh, got some black screws for this thing. I think it's gonna set it off. Appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. And this guy right here waited a pretty penny for this box. But he hung in there like a champ, hung in there with me till the end. I know there's a lot of people out there saying negative things about how bad I got myself backed up and everything. And they have the right to how they feel. If I was a customer waiting as long as this fellow waited, I'd be absolutely pissed. But we all make mistakes. At least I'm sticking in here to the end and, and getting all these amps done. I'll be making a video uh, right when I get finished with the last one before I actually start taking in work again. And it's going to be a big apologetic type video and kind of just letting everybody know what happened and and, and to, the, to the public that it will not happen again. I made a bad uh, business choice and just took on too much work. That's simple. Learned a lot though. 73. Bye-bye. This thing turned out very nice. I really like this. The black screws, just something that tiny, that small of a detail, just really makes this stand off. Black on green. <laughs> Only thing else, I think it'd be really neat, man, if I had some LEDs in them eyes right there and had them keying up, uh, lighting up when you key it up. But, man, that turned out great. That, 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 man, I wish I had one of these. <laughs> if I ever can build me one, I want to build exactly one of these, man. But in blue. So anyway, uh, just for this small one watt dead key, it's producing a 200 watt dead key. So yet, I don't have a lot of attenuation on it because it's a stage damp. I need the one transistor section to work at full capacity. If somebody wants to run a one transistor by itself, it don't need to be working half a ca capacity or 60 70 percent of capacity so keep that in mind when you're running this with your amp with your radio on with both sections on you need to take that in mind with the dead key 200 watt dead key is is quite high you know a lot of people will run that one out there out there shooting hardcore skip you know i understand that but me personally i like to keep a, a, a five or four transistor amp to a round of a 100 watt dead key. That's just my personal preference. I turn I turn the variable down uh, without you turn it, without messing with my dead key on the radio and got it down to a 100 watt dead key. Now that's a little bit less than the turn up. It's about close. Let's see. There we go, right there, 100 watt dead key. No, oh, is she still swinging? No. Oh, still doing 400 watts RMS now that that is amazing I'm, I'm very happy with this I'm very happy just doing that type of power just on that small amount of voltage 13.9 volts 14 volts right there that, 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 that is amazing a lot of my five pill all 2879 five pills in the past I'll get them to do around three 350 RMS uh, on that type of voltage until I hit it with a stronger radio now you hit this thing with a stronger radio. Now you, you, you're, you're looking at 600 watts plus RMS, which I, these are Toshiba's, man. Do not run it like that, please. Let this thing last you. These you're looking at over a grand just worth of transistors here. Let it last you. Let me turn this thing switch off right now. Man, one of these days I might add some technology to that to get that to turn off by itself. This thing absolutely worked perfect. Man, I usually don't get that excited, but, well, I do get excited. I usually don't get that bragging type excited, but, oh, I'm, I'm very happy. I, ho I hope you enjoy this amplifier, bud, and I have a small feeling once people see these videos of these five-pill bases that people are going to be wanting them, and uh, I think I pretty much got it down pat to where I could probably get them built a lot quicker uh, now, and I almost just want to just keep these supplies just for these i hate to use them all up with these bigger base amps and i think i may just get another uh, different power supplies for those base amps and just keep these and just use them uh you can't beat it man two of them per five pill base four pill base works great there's no reason to put a third one in there as you can see 
you're, you're, yes, they are 40 amp mean wells, but we're talking about mean wells here. <laughs> Them things can pull probably up to 60 amps. You know, mean well is a very underrated, my friends. Underrated. They're not even at strain right now, and this thing's doing, you know, 500 watts of RMS. All right, let me quit talking, y'all. 70 thirds. I'm gone. Peace. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.